folks. Welcome to Calvin's Got Game. I'm Calvin. I'm Lewis. And today we're finishing up our top 100 games of yep. all time for now. This is our top 10 list. We'll try not to talk so much about them, but we love these games a yep. lot, so we will be talking quite a bit. Um, before we get started, and uh, let's talk about... Uh, please subscribe. Uh, guys, I need the subscriptions. Appreciate it. Like the likes. It helps that algorithm thing. I don't know anything about it. But apparently likes and shares and all that kind of stuff helps move you up through the deals yes. of uh, 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 YouTube. I don't know. But anyway, I would appreciate it. And we do have some new subscribers. I don't know who their names are, but I appreciate you for scri- subscribing. Uh, we got two new ones, so I appreciate that. We still are a long way from 500. Uh, probably about 100 and something away from 500 before December 31st. If we make it to 500, I'm going to buy a board game, give it away. Um, you guys could, that are subscribed will surely be the ones that get an extra entry into it. And we'll still have it open for other folks as well. But the, the subscribers will get that extra entry. All right, let's get this out of the way. we got some comments we need to do. Uh, got a comment from Sensusgram. Hope I'm saying that right. Says that uh, we should play a board game together because uh, we look almost identical. Now, this must be one handsome person, right? Because <laughs> if we look identical, watch out, world. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. There was no picture along with the uh, uh, the information or the comment, so I don't know. But, hey, if we do, lucky him. All right, so then there's the Lazy Hiker. Lazy Hiker said he would like to try out of the games we mentioned. Knights of Glory. Her Story. Mysterium and Sleeping Gods, which is such a great game. Lewis just doesn't know what he's talking about. So, but no, it's a great game. So, the Lazy Hiker has been playing along with us, giving his top 100 well uh, in the comments. And he's had six crossovers with me and one with Lewis, finally. So, he may have some more. I don't know. Now, I'm going to announce the winner of the contest for Delicious. You can see it behind me. At the end of the video, so stay tuned to see who won that. Guys, uh, I do appreciate every one of my subscribers. Appreciate the likes. And I really appreciate the comments. Guys, it's nice to know that people are watching and people are listening. So, uh, Lewis and I don't do this just for fun. Yeah, yeah we kind of do. Yeah. We kind of do. We do it for both. We do it for both. We do it. I don't make any money at it. That's for yeah. dang sure. Um, but I sure enjoy doing it. I like to spread the love of board games. So does Lewis. Yes. Uh, Lewis and I play in a board game group on Tuesdays, and we invite people to come, uh, people that's not normal gamers. Uh, we, we will teach games to people. We have a great time along with the owner of Three Sons Unlimited where we go play. Guys, if you've never been by there and you're in the local area of where that is, go by and check them out. Buy a board game. Support them. Support your, where you're at, your local brick-and-mortar store. That would be great. All that rambling, let's get started with top 10. I'm excited, Lewis. I'm excited for our top 10. All right, it's my turn to start this week. Yes, it is your turn to start this week. We're going to start off with a banger. My number 10 is Thunder Road Vendetta. It was not on my list before. It's ranked 604 on BGG. It's by Restoration Games. Uh, Two to four players, 45 to 75 minutes to play. I've only played this game about two or three times, but... It just grabbed me. It's got all the the fun kid stuff you like to do in a racing game, right? You get yep. to blow people up. You get to jump on top of them and make them go different ways where they could go off the board and explode. You could make them go into oil or move backwards. So much fun. And you're racing through. It's almost like a Mad Max kind of game, right, where you're having a race across desert or whatever, some kind of terrain. Uh, Thunder Road Vendetta is just a lot of fun. Now, I probably will never own it because it's expensive. The game's expensive. I love it. It's worth the money, I'm sure. But whenever I get around the folks who own it, I'm going to see if we can play it. So (laughs) that's how I get to play uh, the uh, Thunder Road Vendetta. It's such a great game. If you haven't ever played it, and I was like, I didn't think I'd ever want to play it. But when I finally played it, it was just so much the fun factor in the game is just a lot of fun. And I think that's what made it rise to the top for me, was it just made me have that fun of, of uh, racing and messing people over and getting in the way, kind of like your Wacky Racers game yes. that you talked about. And I don't know how that one plays, never played it, but uh, Thunder Road Vendetta, man, if you hadn't played it, it's a thumbs up for me. 
Well, I love I, it. I've seen it, how it's played, and I'm going, yep, Wacky Racers. What they did is just evolve Wacky, race, wacky Racers into that. I've yeah. never seen it play. I mean, I've seen it played on YouTube. Right. Never seen it played in person. I've never played it, but it's one game I'm going, you know what? I would like to play it, but I yes. think you'd have a blast like me because you like to play the wild card and you like to do crazy things. I do in this game. I like to make people go off the deal. I like to. Now, I don't win because I'm too busy trying to make the <laughs> best people up, right? And somebody else who's just cruising along wins the game, but it's still a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And I played it with Josh and Erica when they came down once, and I sure appreciated them bringing it. Um, guys, if you hadn't played it, get it to the table. I think you'll like it. Uh, my number 10 is a board game that I bought two years ago. Um, and But just this past year, I uh, took it out and dusted it off. Okay. You can see it in there. Arkham Horror, the card game. Oh, yeah. yeah. 2016, Fantasy Flight Games, one to two players, a no, uh, number 25 on BG. Um, great game. You have mentioned it already before, I yes, believe. Yes, that is a crossover and with us, for sure. On that one, just to be an in, uh, the investigator trying to solve a mystery with all these creatures coming out at you you're going to get hit no matter what you're going to get hit I thought you didn't get hit right off the bat but Calvin showed me how to play it correctly then I went back and played it going okay it's tougher than I thought <laughs> it is a tough game yeah, it especially is for tough. one person if you're only playing one character you can forget it. You better play two. If you're yes. going to play by yourself, you need to play two characters. Yes. Which I did the second time around, and it still was tough. Still it was is. tough. It's a great game. <clears throat> I like the uh, the cards and how it puts you into the uh, storyline. Mm -hmm. And I know there's going to be a lot of more uh, sets coming out. Uh, too many. Uh, yes. This is... Um, this is the only board game I know, card game, slash board game, that I actually going to be having cards building up. I'm going to be buying the expansion pack. I don't have nothing else to really worry mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. with cards, so this is my one uh, one that I'm going to be focused on. <laughs> the problem is uh, with this one, mm -hmm. the, the Arkham Horror, is if you haven't already started keeping up with it, a lot of them go out of date and they don't carry them anymore. Um, or they quit discontinuing them. And now that they upgraded the game, they've now also upgraded some of the expansions to the second edition, which I guess you could get those. But um, I got quite a few, but it is an expensive game to keep up with. Yeah, it is. Sure. But it's it's worthwhile. It is a fun game. Oh, yeah. yeah. And how the deck keeps changing, If the more cards you add, you the re uh, replayability... It's very high on mm -hmm. this game. So, number 10, Arkham Horror, the card game. It's a great pick. Um, I love that game a lot. Like I said, the only thing that holds me back from it is that LCG aspect of it for mm -hmm. being higher on my list. Because I can't keep up. Yes. I just can't keep up with buying all the stuff. I mean, there's people out there that do. I don't know how they do it, but maybe they you know, may don't have a car payment. They don't have a car <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it is a fantastic game. The storyline is great. I think I played that first scenario um, probably three times. I played it with three different people. Mm -hmm. And one with and, me. And I, yeah, I played it with you. I played it with Josh. I played it with my wife. And each time, there was something different in it. Yeah. Just about. I mean, yeah. the outcomes are always different. You may or may not kill the evil priest, and he may go along with you in the next episode. Or your house may not burn down, and you had, you don't, whatever, right? I may be giving some spoilers, and I'm sorry. But the game is a lot of fun. Storyline is great. Great pick, Lewis. Now, my number nine will probably not surprise Lewis, but it may surprise some of you. Uh, this one I got dusted off again as well. And this one uh, just really resonated with me uh, again, how much I loved it and how much I enjoyed it. I've played it a lot more because of Lewis, uh, but this is Legends of Andor is my number nine. It uh, was not on my list years previously. It's uh, ranked 581 on BGG. It's by Cosmos Games, two to four players, 60 to 90 minutes to play. Legends of Andor is an adventure puzzle game. That's the way I can explain it. Yeah. You 
you don't just go wiping people out like you do in Zombie Side or other games like that. You have to be careful at what you kill because that increases your time clock. Yep. So you have to figure out how you could accomplish your mission that you're trying to accomplish without moving your time clock too fast and also getting through the scenario quickly enough that you can accomplish it. I, yep. I don't know how else to explain that because every... You know, when you run out of moves and he runs out of moves, then you go through this time clock thing where you have to draw a card, move the monsters, refresh some things, and move the narrator up the track. Yeah. So you kill a monster, and then that next turn you also move the narrator. So it's moved twice in one turn. So you have to be careful of how many creatures or monsters you kill so you can accomplish the story. But yet you also can't allow those monsters to get to the castle. castle. Right. So it's a puzzle. That's why I call it a puzzle. Is you're trying to figure out what's the best way that you can work together. You have to cooperate in this yeah. game. Absolutely have to. Um, and I kind of found a pair of the characters that work really good together. Uh, Lewis, you were the wizard. Yeah, the wizard. Uh, and I was the, the ranger. Ranger, yeah. Because the ranger can shoot from a distance away. doesn't have to be right in the, in the mix. And the wizard has a great ability that he can flip a dice, his or someone else's, if they're fighting together. So it's such a great game. Legends of Andor is a lot of fun. It's a little bit of adventuring because there's things that happen. There's some things you can discover on the board. Right. And they're always random because you randomize them. Yep. You know, where they go, where they're at, except for the wells uh, where you get to refresh some things. But Legends of Andor is such a great adventure puzzle game that... It, it had to be on my top ten. That's why Legends of Vandor was my number nine. I love it. Yeah. I'm uh, going to say I love every one of these games because if you ask me any one of these games on my top ten, if I wanted to play them, I'm sitting down right now. I don't care what I got going on. I'm ready to play it. Yep. And um, Legends of Andor, that's one I'm going to be going to be in the top 100 next, yeah. uh, next year. Definitely. Am I going to buy it? Yes. <laughs> when? Don't know. Yeah. I and think I got every expansion just about. I think I'm missing one. You missing one, you said. I'm missing but yeah, one. But when they incorporate the one part I think uh, I don't like is when they incorporate the uh, peasants and you have to save oh, them. you have to save, save them. Them. Lewis doesn't like to lose a I, peasant. He doesn't like a I peasant don't. to be killed by a monster. He has to go rescue him. Even at the peril of leaving you alone to yep. get beat up with something. So... You have to watch Lewis on that one. He don't like to let people die. Innocent civilians die. <laughs> Me, I, it's casualty of war. I'm sorry. <laughs> they may have to go. But uh, Legends of Andor is fantastic. And you know, I don't buy a lot of the expansions for games. No. I really don't. Um, the LCG game like Arkham Horror, I've bought some expansions. But most games, I don't buy the expansion for. So for me to buy these expansions, I actually yes. really like this game. My number nine. You have played this before with me. Okay. And you actually have it too. I do, yeah. The Night Cage. The Night Cage, I sure do. Huh? 2021, Smirks and Laughter Games, one, to f uh, one through five players, ranked 1,934 on BGG, 40 to 60-minute game time. If you want to scare yourself, if you want to really challenge yourself on a, door a dark, stormy night, play this game by candlelight. You can mm -hmm. use the little tea lights if you want, which my wife likes to do. And every time a beast, a creature from the darkness appears, you turn one little light off. It's a game, basically, <clears throat> how many players you have, you need to find that many keys. Then each player has to make it to the exit. But even if one key is lost, nobody uh, escapes. If there's not enough keys okay. left in the game to get. Yes. yes. And nobody gets safe. Everybody dies by the creatures of the darkness. The wax eaters. The wax. The wax. Well, I say eaters. creatures. <laughs> well, I'm just saying they're called the wax eaters yes. because you have a candle per se. Yes. And my copy actually comes with the little candles. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yay tall, but yeah, they come with candles. It's a great game. I <clears throat> I played it with lights on and uh, showing folks how to play. But when you get really used to it playing. Turn the lights off. Have little tea candles or real candles. Uh, depends where you're playing. <laughs> but having that timer that each time a creature appears, you turn off a light, uh, candle. 
It gets darker and darker. And just like in the game, as you move, you only can light up one square in front of you, side, either side, and the back. That's how far you can see. When you move again, you're going to lose some You'll distance. You'll lose something. Some. Yep. So it is really interesting when a uh, one of those wax hits appears, and they cheat. They can appear at the end of the hallway, but everybody's in line of sight. Those uh, wax eaters loses their uh, uh, candle, and they Close only can down. see. <sighs> yep, it ain't only a little can, bit of wax. Only <laughs> can see well one space in front. They of can them. only see what they're standing yep. on. Period. Yep. Period. Yeah. Period. So next move, they're going to move and then have to flip tiles to go where they're at, but they can only flip one until they're right next to someone and that relights their candle. Yeah. Uh, as long as there's not a wax eater around, which. Is, is something. See, my li- my wife likes to play it in the dark. Because she is, she, like she, she would say herself, she is evil. <laughs> I don't believe that. But number nine, Night Cage, is my one of my favorite games to play with my wife. Hmm. This was a Kickstarter. I don't do a lot of Kickstarters. But this was a Kickstarter for me because I like Smirk and Dagger, Smirk and Laughter. Same company. They just make different style of board games. Um, so... I got it. I enjoyed the game, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. Hmm. I thought this game would be much... I don't know that I would just enjoy And the more I play it, the more I really like it. Um, but I just thought I would really love the game a little more. And I got all the little fancy... Some of the fancy... I didn't buy the little the little metal people. But I did you know, get the little wax candles and the acrylic this or acrylic that. Which is nice, but not necessary. Right. Um, but I, I just found the game, I guess if I got into it like you do, Lewis, turn out all the lights and all that, but I found the game fun, don't get me wrong, I would say if you haven't ever played it, play it, and it's worth buying, um, I just, it just didn't excite me as much as I thought it would. See, my wife even wants to put on, uh, soundtracks. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> on it, and she wants to play it. When it's storming outside, <laughs> and you know the light's gonna go out. Yeah, she she's into the theme. Yes, for sure. and the theme is great. You're these, I don't know. You're trapped in this dungeon, and these creatures are tormenting you, and you're trying to find yeah. a way out. It has a scary theme for sure. It's a scary, scary <laughs> theme. I'm over here, country, uh, <laughs> but it has a scary theme for sure. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I like it. It just didn't. Didn't thrill me as much as I thought it would when I backed it. All right, my number eight is a larger game. It's Scythe. Scythe is was ranked twenty three for me the last time I did this list. It's ranked number seventeen on BGG. It's by Stonemaier Games. One to five players, ninety to one hundred fifteen minutes to play. What can I say about Scythe? When I first saw Scythe being played, I was like, "Woo! It looks like a complicated game." You know, you had your own little board. You had this board out there, you had these mechs, and you had these people, these little miniatures, and you were collecting resources, and I was like, wow, this is a really in-depth game. But when you get down to it, you're really playing your own metagame on your board. Hmm. You're trying to upgrade yourself to be able to control uh, and get certain things and control certain areas of the board to score you know, points, how you score points and get things. There's not much, there can be combat in the game, but it doesn't necessarily help you to do combat in the game a lot of times. So the game is a lot of you're working on your own stuff while you're having to deal with other people. But I like the game. It's a lot of fun. They have these little cards sometimes that come up that have you make a decision. Um, It's just such a good game. I enjoy it. It's a worker placement type game. Um, you're moving your, you're removing things from your board or upgrading your board to be able to do more things. You can put more mechs on the board. You can put. Uh, I think there's something else you can put on board. I can't remember right now. But anyway, there's a lot of things that you can do for your system. I like the game. It's a lot of fun. That's why Scythe is my number eight. You get to collect oil and all these other kind of things. It's a really cool game. 
Joseph. Never heard of that one. Never oh. heard of it. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, I want to say it's up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. it's right here somewhere. Okay. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, it's right there. But it's so good, man. It is just a worker placement. You're manipulating your own deal where you can upgrade yourself. And other people, and your board is different from other people's. Okay. So the things that you can upgrade or do to upgrade one thing may be different for someone else. They may do a different thing to upgrade that. So you're, everybody's faction is different because you're different factions in the game. I, I love it a lot. I'm going to check that one out then. Uh, my number eight, Avatar. The Last Airbender, Fire Nation, Rising. Hmm. A 2020, 20, 2022 <laughs> game. The OP Games publisher. One to five players. 6,243 on BGG. It is a game uh, off of Rising, uh, uh, Thanos Rising. That's special, yeah. Yeah, same concept. However, in this, if the Fire Nation, well, first, if any, if anybody has seen this video, have seen Avatar: The Last Airbender, it is right off that uh, show. It's uh, a great show, and I was kind of worried whenever this, they do a show or movie to a board game. Sometimes they miss the mark. Sometimes they get close, but this one. With the characters they took from the show to the game. And there's a little track on the side. That you have to beat the Fire Lord's little tracker up. If you don't, it just gets difficult to defeat the game. Mm -hmm. You don't lose the game right off the bat. If the tracker on the Fire Lord's site hits the top. It just becomes a little bit more difficult. So you can still win the game. But it, you will need more players on this. Now, I have played this uh, by myself, <clears throat> which most of these games on my top 10 is one player. Avatar The Last Airbender, a little bit more difficult to play uh, solo because you can use two characters to play. One character, I do not recommend. No. Most, no. Of those, most of those games that are meant to be cooperative... Mm -hmm. And you play, you know, you play solo, you always usually have to play an extra character. Yes. Most of the time. That tracker on the side is a great timekeeper. Great timekeeper because each turn after you do your actions, rolling your dice, just like uh, Thanos Rising, collecting your characters or defeating uh, the evil uh, Fire Lord's uh, henchmen, that tracker, uh, that, that card flips. And either going to benefit you, or it's going to benefit the Fire Lord. Each turn. Um, unlike uh, the uh, Thanos Rising, you actually can help each other anytime in the game. To give a person an extra die, give a person an extra flip of uh, a die, change it to what they would need to be. Or just give it a symbol they actually need. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more in helping each other in, in this game. But that, <clears throat> Than, uh, that not Thanos, but the Fire Lord's tracker is always taken. It's always taken. And you never know when the uh, you can't meet the requirements to move up your little uh, marker. If you can't meet your requirements on your uh, your turn or the group's turn, your marker stays in the spot while the Fire Lord's marker just keeps going up. Mm. So it is a great game. My wife played it once with me, and she said it is very stressful. <laughs> Much stressful than Thanos Rising because you have all these characters, but how they play off of each other, your characters can be wiped out. Mm -hmm. In one turn, if you're not careful on this. Interesting. Nice uh, artwork. The artwork is nice. The They capture every character in the show, in this game. <clears throat> and that's why I like Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes, because how they incorporated from the show into this game. They captured it very well. Hmm. My opinion, though. Never played it. Sounds interesting, though. If it's on the same principle as... as uh 
Thanos Rising, it should be pretty good. Yeah. So, so that was your number. That was my number eight. All right. My number seven is a game called The Pillars of the Earth. This is a rank 409 on BGG. It's by Cosmos Games, two to four players, 90 to 120 minutes to play. In The Pillars of Earth, you're trying to build this beautiful cathedral. You're trying to be the best builder of this cathedral. Everybody's working on the same cathedral, but you want to contribute the most, to score the most points. In doing this, you're getting extra builders or upgraded builders. It's a worker placement game. Um, you're trying to collect resources so that you can do these certain things to be able to build things. Um, the game's just a... I, I enjoy the game. This is one of those games that's not cooperative. It's actually competitive. It's a worker placement. Um, the theme is... a. It was written about some book. I have no idea. By Ken Follett or something, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, it's Kim Elliott Follett something. Anyway... There, he has a series of games. Um, I actually have this one, and I think I talked about the Column of Fire uh, not too long ago. But anyway, in the Pillars of Earth, you're trying to build that cathedral. You're trying to upgrade your builders. You're trying to go and collect sand and, and other things to make other things to get resources to build this temple. But I enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun game. You're scoring uh, victory points, basically trying to get the most victory points. And I enjoy the game a lot. That's why I, my number seven is The Pillars of the Earth. Hmm. I've heard the book series. Never read the book series. But I've I heard, never read them. But I heard, uh, actually, uh, some of the kiddos that um, I do at the Selma camp likes actually read these. Huh. I'm going. Really? Yeah. It's more than I am. I ain't read none of them yet. <laughs> so, and I don't know if I will, but I don't think you have to read the book to enjoy it. Right. Um, both of them are... are uh, I think both of them are good games. Um, I think I prefer, I, well, I do prefer the Pillars of the Earth more than I do the Column of Fire, but I still like them both. Uh, that was your number seven. seven. You're okay. on seven. Okay, my number seven. Is that actually a game you got for me? You did? Yeah. yeah. And my wife loves it if, to this day. You know I get games that hopefully your wife is going to love. Not that you <laughs> like those. I try to help you get them for your wife. Uh, so that she'll play with you. Yes. My, uh, it is called Glow. 2021 game. Box by publisher. Two to four players. 1,732 on BGG. Now, when I saw my wife saw the rating on it going, Oh, come on. That low? Is it? Well, it's not that low. I don't think it's that popular. I mean, I don't think people know about it. No. Because it didn't get much buzz Mm -mm. when it was coming out. So I think that's why it's ranked pretty low. It is a, first of all, the artwork. The artwork is a nice artwork. Uh, If you're into that black and white artwork, ink style drawing, it is very beautiful in my opinion. It's a game of chance, complete chance. Mm-hmm. You are rolling dice, but it's not regular dice, they're elemental dice. Mm-hmm. And I've played this with, uh, with you, Kevin, mm-hmm. before, and a few other folks. And there is, you are rolling uh, dice to get build your uh, uh, deck. It's a deck builder game and a luck game. As you do these, pick your characters on the board you get to pick whatever dice they for that round those cards have above them now as you roll you get to do certain abilities collect little lightning bugs which will be points at the end of the game you can collect re-rolls which you need help with sometimes or move up on the track and there are several ways to move on the track but there's also a little forest that you move around and you want to get into an encampment. encampment. The problem is, if you roll something that you, to move on along, and there's, a, let's say, a water droplet, and then you roll a, a fire, and it says no fire, you roll a fire, you can't move. Right. And so you're stuck there, and you keep rolling. And you already had your plan, past plan, but you keep ro- uh, pick the char- character that, rolls heavy on fire, you're going to have to change gears and go to another mm-hmm. path. And it's a path that you might don't want to go. But 
if you pick a character that's heavy with fire and they'll say pass that says no fire roll, you in trouble. Yeah. Now there's one die there that is very deceiving. One die that allows you if you roll this die and gives you three points on the track. A lot of folks want to go for that dice, that character. However, the chances of that happening, it is actually very low. I, I think we played with someone that grabbed that dice, and I think he only get, ended up rolling it twice the whole game. Mm -hmm. So it didn't pay off for him. It's the um, going around the board. Um, there's only so many turns because the, as the deck dwindles, the turns goes away. Uh, the more players, the more competitive. The less players, the least competitive on this game. Now, after you play a couple of time, uh, rounds, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. And a couple of times, you get used to the cards, which one's good. However, when you get tired on the one side of this board game, you flip it over, and the game changes completely, completely. Because now you are going from island to island. Mm -hmm. And what you will require from going to one island to another island is completely different from the uh, other side. So the playability on this game is also high on here. Yeah. Because you got two sides to play with. And the difficulty, you can add some cards in there. Which they recommend not to add at the very first. Right. That will do little curses. On not everybody else, yeah, uh, only but you too. Mm -hmm. So it will hurt you if you decide to uh, do something and go and pick a die that you know is bad, but uh, you're going to take that chance for yourself too. Mm -hmm. So it glow a great game, it's a fun game. My wife <clears throat> will always be eyeing it and it's going, Do you play that tonight? I'm going, Yeah, why not? Beat me. <laughs> And the funny thing, Calvin, I remember, if you remember, I've played this game several times. Mm -hmm. And the night I got that big group of two, <laughs> yeah. I said, I will win tonight because yeah. I haven't won it at, at all yet. Yeah. I lost yeah. very badly that night. I don't remember who won, but I remember, hey, Lewis, you didn't win tonight. <laughs> no, you actually tied with, I uh, forgot who. Uh, Philip. Yeah, you tied with him. And you go, I tied. <laughs> who knew? Who knew? But yes, number seven, Glow for me. Glow is good. I like it. Uh, will probably won't make my top 100, but I do like the game. Uh, the minimalistic artwork is nice. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Now, the board could have been a little bit nicer, I guess more colorful, but it, it's still nice. Um, what I like is you're drafting those cards in turn order by what you roll. Yeah. So you're trying to get some cards, and the card that you may get makes you kill another card if you mm -hmm. roll a certain dice pattern or whatever. Yes. And so, some of the cards you get may help you, some of them may not, some of them may hurt you, but either way, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy the game a lot. Good choice. My number six has already been mentioned by Lewis. Uh, previous, he doesn't like it as much as I do, which is sad. Uh, my number six is Dead of Winter. Uh, it was ranked 24 a couple years ago. It was 2020, is 220 on BGG. It's by Plaid Hat Games. Two to five players, 60 to 120 minutes. Guys, uh, this game right here stands out to me as just being silly fun. I like yeah, it a lot. it is. You're trying to run your own group of folks in this colony of people. Um, the decisions, it's called a crossroad game because they have these crossroad cards that the person in front of you draws a card if you do whatever it is on the card that you that it's telling you, you have to wait for them to do. So if you leave the colony with a person, that may trigger that card. Everything stops. They read the card. You have to decide whatever to do on the card or whatever. Then you can continue on with your turn. You get to go to the li police station, library, grocery store, gas station, other places. And sometimes the person, like if you're the police officer or the librarian or something like that, You'll get an extra bonus if yeah. you go to the library or the police station or whatever. But you're searching for food, medicine, guns, and every gas. day, yeah, gas, every fuel, whatever it's called. Yeah. Every day, there's a, a general task that the group has yeah. to meet. Yeah. 
So it may be you need medicine or you may need food or you may need gas or fuel, whatever it's called. And so you have to give up so many per player. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, you have to feed everybody that's in the colony. Everybody else is out in the town is kind of scavenging on their own. They don't have to worry about feeding them. But if they're in the colony, you have to feed them. And it's one can of food per two people. Yeah. And if you don't have enough food, then somebody has to starve. You get a starvation token. I think somebody dies. But when you go to these other locations, you have to roll this threat die. You either get frostbitten, you get wounded, or you get bit. Or nothing happens. Yeah. There is a blank. If you get bit and there's multiple people on the location, well, you automatically die. So the next person in in order of uh, rank, if you will, gets it passes on to them, yeah. right? So they can either die and end it, nobody else can catch it, get infected, or they can take a chance, roll the dice, but if they get anything other than a blank, they're dead, and then it passes on to the next person. So you can lose a lot of people in a hurry. Um, this game's just so much fun, and there's a possibility of a traitor. Not always has to be, but there's a possibility. I don't play with the traitor aspect a lot. When I'm playing, especially when I'm playing just me and my wife or my kids, we just play it, try to play as cooperatively, and it's still hard to beat. Yeah. Still hard to beat. But I really enjoy this game. Dead of Winter is probably my favorite. i got a great piece of artwork. You can probably see it on some of my older videos. It's hanging on my old studio wall. Uh, I made it myself. I made the artwork myself because I liked it so much. I liked the game myself so much and framed it that uh, I just love the game. It's a lot of fun. Dead of Winter for me is number six. I'm telling you, if you hadn't played it, uh, what's wrong with you? You need to get it to the table is all I can say. I love it. I do like it. I love it, but it won't be that high. <laughs> it's just that it's a game that I know I probably would never win. Well, it's the games that bring a lot of interaction, and for me, that makes my top 10 a lot. Right. Or, or in my top 100 is games that give me the most interaction with my game group, right. who I'm playing with. So, and this game seems to do that. Dead of Winter seems to give me that. You know, deal of okay, we're all working together, but are we? Um, right. You know, and and oh, I'm gonna go here, but I got bit. Sorry, man. You're gonna have to either die or try to roll the die. Yeah. So it gives me a lot of interaction with, or you get one of those cards that say you found some people wandering. They're hungry. Do you invite them into the colony? Now we got more mouths to feed because you decided to bring more people into yep. the colony. Now I'm mad at Lewis, you know, because he brought more people into feed. Of course, you know, Lewis can't let people straggle around, no. right? <laughs> Me, I'm like, yeah, beat it. You're on your own. <laughs> so uh, it's just a game that the interaction of the group and and how we play it together, I think, is what brings it so high. For me. Yes, and that's what... I don't mind playing it with a large group, but if it's only myself and my wife... Yeah, because two people, yeah. it's not as fun as it is right. with five. Yeah, and that's why, it will, that's why it's so low rank, rank for me. It's got to be played... For me, I have to be in a large group to play. Yeah, it goes up to five players, and I'm telling you, I I, I think I like it with a four or five group than I do a two. Three's okay, uh, but I think two is just not enough. Now, if you're going to play it cooperatively and you want to just have fun, then that's fun. But anyway, number six for me, Dead of Winter. My number six is X Men Under Siege. A 1994 game. Ooh, you went way back. Lewis. Oh, yes. Publisher Pressman Toy Corp. Two to four players. is ranked very low. 14,300. About two hours to play uh, on this one. Now, I think you have played this before. I think we played it one time together, Lewis. Yeah. It's an older game. It, is, it was a mass production game. However, nowadays, very, very few good copies are laying around. Very few good copies. I got lucky to get one of the first, first editions to come out. Still have all the pieces. Still have all the figures intact. Of course, some of the cards have faded a little bit. Still the board, still solid. No tears or anything. Mm -hmm. Even the cards, the cardboard cards... Still good, solid cardboard cards. It's a game of you're the X-Men. 
you are defending the mansion, the uh, uh, X-Men's mansion. You got the evil mutants coming in, trying to take over. As the game goes on, you are exploring the mansion. You're turning over these little, these little tokens. It either going to be a safe mm-hmm. token with nothing happening, even mutant. Uh, then you have to fight. Or another X-Men. Everybody starts with two X-Men. And as you go along, you can earn more X-Men, earn more dice. However, trying to find the combination that works for you. Because uh, with all the X-Men out there, I think they, uh, in board game, I think they have 7, 18, 7, 14, 20, I think 21 characters. Mm, That's a lot. And trying to find the right combination that will work for you. That will help uh, aid each X Men you have is takes a while. It takes a while to find your combination. Now I like to play it. Uh, first time players, I let them pick what they want. But after that, after a few times playing, random because you don't know what's going to mm-hmm. be coming. <clears throat> there are several levels on this board. You go on up and down as movements. But the aspect of facing enemies and cannot move until you defeat the enemy. You might have a pool of 10 dice. And you have to hit, uh, hit the enemy equal to their toughness. Mm. But if you roll and you don't have enough, you get a damage. Now, you're dead, right? No. You have, when you get damage of, to your health, which is on the side of the card... You have one chance to come back. But you have to be careful if you uh, miss that roll, you're out. And when you lose your, all your X-Men, you're out of the game. Mm. So it's a very interactive game. It is who can get the most points. But eventually that is set to the side because as more mutants coming out and you get trapped fighting one mutant after another mutant, uh, evil mutant, you're going to end up going, okay, I ha- there's too many mutants here. We have to team up safe. Because if all the X-Men that's playing ever get eliminated, the, mu- over. Yep, the game's over. So far, that has not happened yet when I'm played. But yes, number six, X-Men Under Siege uh, is for me. Yeah, I played it once. I thought it was interesting as a, as a 1994 game goes. Uh, you know, 1994 uh, mass market board game yes. can only be so good, right? Yes. But I think, and, and Lewis, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in here a little bit. I think this has a little nostalgia value. For yes, you. it does. I think I think you have a little nostalgia value with the that board game, mm-hmm. and I, I have some that do that with me too. Uh, so I, I get why I get why it's your number. Mm-hmm. Six? Yeah, yeah, number six. Well, I saw the cartoon episodes. Oh, did you? Yeah, all the, I I can yeah. remember all of them. Yeah, it's like me. I have a I have a fond memory of the evil Knievel stunt cycle. Oh yeah. Uh, the real, you know, you rev him up, <laughs> he goes off, and uh, you know, I had the stunt cycle, I had the rocket, I had his funny car and his van, his travel van. I had everything. I loved Evil Knievel as a kid, right? Uh, so that was something big for me. So the nostalgia part, and you can still buy that evil, evil oh, yeah, thing on the Amazon. Yes, it's like holy cow. So and I told my wife the day we were eating dinner, and I said, "I'm gonna buy one of those, and I'm gonna go out here and play with it in the driveway." And she goes, "I'll play with you." It's like, all right, oh, yeah, <laughs> all right. So my number five, my number five is a newer game. It's Everdale Far Shore. This was not on my list before. Now, this game is ranked 2,113 on BGG, and it's by Star- Starling Games. It's one to four players, 45 minutes to 80 minutes to play. Now, I love Everdale, and it's, been on, it's on my list. Mm-hmm. It's somewhere in my top 100. I really enjoy it. But Everdale, far short, I thought fixed something that Everdale, I didn't care for in Everdale. 
because I never did do it in the right order. Right. That's what I didn't like is it was my stupidity of not doing it in the right order. You had those little tokens you put on there that if you made the end, then you got the little innkeeper person mm-hmm. you could put on for free, right? Well, that was always, I always went backwards. I always got the innkeeper, but didn't get the end first. So I couldn't, you know, do the thing. So that kind of bothered me. So they kind of fixed that in Farshore. In Farshore, you get three anchors. And so you get to use these anchors. So if you have a post office, you have whatever, you can put any critter in there. Hmm. Doesn't matter. Just use an anchor, put on there, put the critter on there, you're good to go. Doesn't matter if it fits. Doesn't you know? As long as it's a critter, it doesn't matter. I like Far Everdale Farshore. I think it just... It's the same stuff as Everdale. Just has a few little extra things. They have some islands down at the bottom. Um, it's still that whole was it spring, fall, winter, summer thing? You yes. know, uh, where you're collecting things, and it's you're collecting uh, little shards of glass, driftwood, seaweed. I can't think of the other thing you're collecting, but you're still doing that to buy cards and get things. I like Everdale, and I like Everdale Farshore, but both of them seem like they take a long time to get your engine going. You yes. only got two workers. And so you put it out here, you take a couple resources, you put it over here, you take a couple resources, and you're like, well, I still don't have enough to buy things, right? So I'm going to have to bring all my people back and get another maple, you know, another char- critter, another character. And then you start trying to get it. And then eventually your engine starts going, but by the time that happens, you're already at the end of the game. <laughs> end of the game, yes. And so that drives me crazy. There's other games that do that too, because I don't. It, it, Lost Ruins of Arnak is yes. one of them. I don't feel like I got enough time to do everything I want to do, and that's the way I am in Everdale. I just don't feel like I have enough time to do everything I want to do. So, Everdale Far Shore, it's it's a beautiful game. It's fun. It's the same beautiful artwork that you get. I mean, they're different cards, but it's the same beautiful artwork you get in Everdale. Uh, and instead of a tree, you have a lighthouse that you put the cards in. Um, it's, I don't know. It's just a great game. I like Everdale. And Everdor, Everdale Farshore fixed that little issue with me uh, about having to get the, the place of business first before you got the critter. Now, I, if I already have the deal, I can put any critter on it. It doesn't matter. I don't have to wait for a specific critter. So I can put the king in, in a post office instead of the palace, right? Or the whatever. So, I like the game a lot. Everdale Far Shore, I mean, Starling Games did it again with the great uh, work that they do on Everdale. It's fantastic. I like it a lot. So, if you had not played it, you might want to check it out. If you like Everdale, I think you'll like Everdale Far Shore. There you go. See, that is one game, since I do like Everdale, that is one, uh, one I want to get because it is a separate from Everdale. It is. It's a standalone mm-hmm. game. Okay. Yeah. And it's one that I want to get uh, get it so I can play it. Because, yes, yeah, same thing. I'm trying to get that post office or the yeah. palace. Yes. I, it, I don't forget it, but just trying to find it when it comes out and before anybody else gets it. Right. And just like you, you said, trying to get those, get the supplies to buy those cards. It's a slow-moving engine. It's a slog at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, some people are good at it. Yes. Christine, sometimes, oh. she has her engine going the first... She just puts her person out the first in. She gets, like, three-something. She goes, oh, I can build this. Now I've got that. I can take that. And I'm like... How? <laughs> you know, I'm going, I don't understand that. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Well, that was your number five. That was my number five. Okay. So, guess what my number five is? I'm going to guess Everdale Far Shore. No, just Everdale. Oh, okay. I don't know. I figured it's the same as mine. Uh, now, my number five is Everdale, the original. All right. Uh, 2018, Starling Games, one to two, uh, one to four players, and 36 on BGG, about uh, 40 to 80 minutes game time. That's yeah. a crossover, too. Everdale was on my list. Yes, that's, that's another crossover. I uh, just about to say that. Um... Everdale, great game. Great uh, cards. Uh, the tree, which I put it together one time, and I left it alone. <laughs> Me <I'm> not... too. <laughs> I have it sitting. I don't have it here. I, I left it out the other. 
the other place, but I, I'm gonna bring it over. But yeah, I put it together and I just left it. It's sitting on top of something to where I can just take it off and use it when I need yes. it. Yes, right? because I didn't want to take it off. Oh. To, no, yeah. but yeah, beautiful tree. But yet, uh, it has lots. The cars are beautiful. The, yeah. the cars are nicely done. The components are nicely done. Squishy berries. <laughs> very squishy. Um, and how the game plays, it's very simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, gather your stuff, pay what you need to get your cards, and then you finish up in, uh, as long as you get a 5x5, five five, correction, a 5x... Five I think it's just 13 cards. 13, 13 you can cards. only have 13 cards in your tableau, in your city. Four, eight. No, 12 cards. I think it's 13. 13? I think it's 13, Lil. Okay. I'm one of those. I tell you what, let me look. You go ahead. <laughs> um, I'll look it up. That way we'll be right. Right. When you get to, be, uh, you keep going until you get build your city. Now, some folks can do it easily. Some folks don't. Let At the end of the game, even if you don't get your city built, you still can win because there's been cases that um, I have played games that I didn't get the city built. But, yes, I still won because of the points I ended up. We're both wrong, Lewis. Uh-oh. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> oh, we missed it. <laughs> we both were wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, a five by five. No, that'd be... Three, three by five. Three by five, little city. But the ability how the cars walk off each other to help you, especially the little leaf cart... Yeah. At the end of every round, you get to... Uh, oh, yeah, those are the production the production, production cards. cards. Yeah, yeah. That they trigger off of each other, and mm-hmm. you, and I think that's how Christine is able to do that, that picking... Well, uh, but you do that when you go from fall or to winter, or winter to fall, right. when you get to do the production again mm-hmm. yes. off of the cards you have in your deal. So, right. yeah, you're right. That yeah. might be part of it. And how, And I think that's how she gets all that stuff right. and gets Lisa us in the dust. But yet, like you said, it's an awesome game. Um, like I said, with the game you just mentioned, I'm going to get that one. Uh, haven't never played it yet. I've seen it on um, YouTube play, but that's one I want to get played before I buy it. Just to see the feel of it. Get the it's feel good. Of it. uh, but yes, Everdale is my number five. You know, the first time I played Everdale, I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it. I, I was like... I don't get it. You're trying to build these cards. And I just couldn't get my engine going was the problem. I didn't understand building those production cards early would help you get more stuff as you moved along your seasons, right? Right. So I didn't get that. It wasn't explained to me. So the first time I played it, I was like, yeah, this this game sucks. (laughs) But the more times I played it, and then I decided, you know what, okay, it's pretty. I think it's pretty good. And I bought it, and I brought it home and played it with my wife. My wife goes, oh, I really like this beautiful art. Of course, you know, she likes the little cut-out critters, the little wooden critters. And she likes the squishy berries and the logs. They're all really nice components. And in Far Shore, um, you have squishy seaweed. Seaweed is the squishy yeah. one. <laughs> the seaweed is very thin, too. It's very, very thin. Um, but, yeah... Everdale just grew on me over time and I was like wow this is such a good game and then when I saw uh, Everdale Far Shore I immediately bought it now I bought the expansion expansions for Everdale never played any of them they actually a couple of them gives you extra crit- uh, critters on the opening to, uh, game, of the game some will actually let you move your critters around uh, as the game goes on but a lot of folks uh, seen on YouTube, oh, I'm gonna play with all the expansions, even in the rule books. Every rule book says, Do not play with all the It'd expansions, just be too overwhelming. It I, is, I don't think I would want to do that anyway. Even if you had all the expansions, I don't think I'd want to do that. They make the game way too long, it costs too much analysis paralysis, right? right? Uh, the only one expansion I think I'd want. For Everdale is the one where it does the adventuring at the bottom. On the bottom? Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it's called. but I uh, don't either. Uh, winter something, I think, because it's got something to do with winter time. But anyway, yes. I think and that game we were talking about the other day, about, we always talked about the one you talked about the winter last month. Uh, last, endless winter? Into some, paleo is the one I get it confused Oh, with. yeah. Pa- it's Paleo. But yeah, uh, if you get Ev- Everdale and get the other expansions, don't play it. Me and, Ms. C- me and Christine tried it. 
the biggest mistake we have ever made on a board game. Yeah, I don't ever want to have all the expansions <laughs> of any games I got, so. No. But yeah, Everdale was my number five. Well, I think this next one's a crossover with you as well from the past. This is called Atlantis Rising. Oh. It was 19 for me a year or so ago. It's ranked 597 on BGG. It's by Elf Creek Games, which makes fabulous games as well. Mm-hmm. One to seven players, 60 to 120 minutes to play. Now, Atlantis, I don't know if this one was on your list. I think you had uh, Escape from Atlantis. Yeah, Escape from Atlantis. Atlantis Rising is a game to where you're trying to keep Atlantis from sinking. It's kind of like in the starfish pattern, and you're putting out your workers to collect resources to help build this generator thing that will lift the island. Hmm. It is a cooperative game. Now, you'll roll this dice, and one of the island pieces will flood. You actually flip over the piece of the island, because it's like puzzle pieces making the connection, so you actually flood it, and if you have people on it, they just come back. You know, you don't get to perform the action that they were on. You really have to work together in this one. I played this with Josh once, and it was... Uh, an experience. He had kind of the deluxe edition, I think, with the really nice components. And we played it, and we won, but it was just by the by the hair of our, you know, skin of our teeth, whatever you want to call it, which I, I don't like that saying. I don't like peel, keep your eyes peeled either. Horrible sayings. Anyway, um, I like the game a lot. I don't own it. It's kind of a grail game for me. Uh, that I would like to own it, I want to get it, but every time I think about buying it, it's either all sold out to where I want to get it from, mm-hmm. or there's something else shinier and right catches my eye or something <laughs> yeah. before I can make that purchase. So, you know, whether whatever it is, a motorcycle or whatever that catches my eye, um, and I don't buy it. But it's one of my grail games that I want to get. Atlantis Rising is so much fun. You're trying to keep Atlantis from sinking. And you're trying to collect enough resources to, to build this machine to help raise the, the island or it's appeasing the gods or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. I can't remember. But I just love the game so much. I enjoy playing it. I want to buy it. It's a beautiful game. Uh, Elf Creek Game makes great games, great components, uh, great mechanics. So... Uh, it's not a commercial for Elf Creek games, but they do make some great games. If you haven't played Atlantis Rising, find someone who owns it. Go to a local board game store if they have it. Play it or go to a, one of those uh, bits and games or whatever they call them where you go eat and play games. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I don't think I would like to do because I don't like food around my games. But yes. anyway, my number four is Atlantis Rising. It is a fabulous game if you've never played it. It's a great cooperative game. Not easy to play, uh, or not easy to win, but easy to play. It's a great game. Another game that I never heard about, but that's what's good about this. There's games that you never have heard about that I, I, on my list, and there's mm-hmm. games that I've never heard of that's on your list. And that's what we're really here for, giving yeah. games ideas for folks out there. And I, and I hope people go, wow, I've never heard of that game. I'm about to go check it out. And they go buy it if they yeah. can find it. I think it's great. My number four. Which my wife going, really? How did you manage that when she was typing this up for me? Is Ark Nova. 2021 game. Uh, Virgin Land Spy uh, Soul Publisher. I think I said that right. One to four players. Rating on BGG. And this is why she really went, really? Rating four. Four, you got it a four. Four. And the chances of that just happened. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I don't think you have played this one yet. Ark Nova? Uh, no, I haven't played it yet. This is the one with the zoo animals, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played it yet. Um, it is a card uh, card building, uh, deck building uh, concept game. It is. It was ranked a little bit lower than the expansion pack came out, and it. Fix, I think, one issue from the original. There is a board, and you have a little board yourself that you have to set your uh, zookeeper ability um, task. You randomly put them down, 
uh, except for one card. Um, uh, one card has to go on the very uh, end, that is placing animals out, which you can't do that in the first round anyhow. But depending where it's on your track, there's five spots. Depending uh, where it is, is how powerful the card is. The further up the spot, the better the card ability is. Mm. Um, there are animals on this board, but there are sometimes the animals that there were yes, really we can't even get these because on your board you have to put out uh, in uh, areas to place them. And depending how big the animal is, there are requirements, either two spaces, three mm -hmm. spaces, five, and so on. And the issue was, it might be all five uh, space animals up there and... Mm -hmm. No room to put them. Yeah. And you stuck for two or three rounds and nobody's doing anything. With the expansion they put in, which is with uh, sea animals, there's an engine built in there that... When the uh, the a wave little wave come up one of the carts, it actually start clearing out the carts. Mm. So it helps to go through the uh, stack of carts quicker. And it, if there's nothing on there usable, it helps to move it along. It gives more uh, options for more carts. Now, saying that, to play all the cards in one game, you would never happen. Never have mm -hmm. the deck is I think now up to five hundred cards. Jeez. <laughs> yes, I think that's with the expansion. Yes, with the expansion, but to get every card, and you might have a combination you play several times, but to get that combination every time, it's going to be difficult. So the replayability on this game is high. <laughs> now the solo version of this game, which has a little mark on the side, I don't mind it. But yet I don't like it because you only have six rounds to do stuff. Seven rounds, correct you. Seven rounds to do stuff. On the eighth round, you everything comes together. It goes really fast, really fast. And where you can do uh, action of a community area, if you don't do nothing there, the uh, AI will be put in its... Uh, to uh, tokens in a spot, mm -hmm. so it will cost you more to do this extra mm -hmm. ability. So it l you lose a lot of sp uh, free stuff or mm -hmm. a little bit cheaper stuff. But overall, the game, the cars are beautiful, very beautiful, uh, well photographed cards because they, they look like real photographs. Uh, the gameplay smooth uh, comes. It's really smooth playing, and somebody can just, you know what, I'm done this round, I'm going to uh, take a break, collect what they can, and everybody else can play. So, there is, the round doesn't end until you get all the way to the break on the end of the game. And depending on how many players, depending on how far the break marker goes down. But yes, the, the ability to do stuff... The ability to gain more workers, because you only start off with two. Mm. But as you keep going, you gain three, four, five, which could see him going, stop him. Because <laughs> I always find a way to get either in the first, or I won't say first, it has to happen a couple of times, but by the third round, uh, go, go around, I already have four uh, mid in my area. And I'm just going all over the place. And Christine going, That's I needed that card. Well, you don't have enough folks. <laughs> you don't have enough things to get it. <laughs> but yeah, it is a, a fun game. The re replayability is very hard high with all these cards. The solo version is difficult. It is very difficult. But as a group game, very entertaining. Very entertaining. But yes, Art Nova is my number four there. Yeah, I haven't played it. It's a little on the long side. Yeah, it is. It so is a long side. I don't know if I'll ever play it, but I might one day. I, I, I It seems interesting. Uh, I like deck building and I like worker placement, so I, it might be something I want to play, but I haven't played it at this point. My number three is Dune Imperium. 
This was not on my list before. It's ranked number six on BGG. Hmm. It's by Dire Wolf Games. It's one to four players, 60 to 120 minutes. Dune Imperium is a game, you know, set in the Dune universe. Um, you're going out trying to collect water and other resources, the spice, um, to do things, uh, to recruit new uh, people um, in your hand. Uh, you're trying to make peace with all the other factions and getting their blessings. You're trying to have the, the, the blessings from that faction to earn extra victory points. And there is a warring mechanism in here. So uh, everybody's trying to fight for this bonus at the end of the game. So you're contributing people to the war. Um, you can either put them in the war or you can put them in your barracks. And so depending on how bad you want that reward, mm -hmm. you put the people out there. Well, just because you have a lot of people out there, there's some other cards that you can buy and get that allows you to, during the battle, play a card that tells you have so many more people out there. You know, you've got three more fighters in the arena or whatever. But it goes around to everybody's done playing cards and whatever, and whoever has the most then gets the top prize. The next person gets second, and I think there is a third if you're playing with four people. If you're only playing with two, you're going to get first and third. So... Uh, Dune Imperium is a, is a game to where you're trying to collect victory points, you're trying to uh, collect resources to be able to do other things, work replacement. I like the game a lot. Uh, Dune Imperium, is, it's not as combative if you, as you think it is. There is that warring part in there, but it's just a lot of fun. You can, you, if you know you're not going to be able to win, somebody's got a bunch of people out there, you can go ahead and put all your people in the barracks and wait for next round, hoping some other thing comes up good that you might really want and shove all your people into the <laughs> into the war, right? So I really, really, really enjoy Dune Imperium. It's a lot of fun. Uh, has minimum minimal uh, player interaction. So other than that war, that's about it. Uh, you can still where people's going on their space. You know, you can take that space before they do, uh, which gets aggravating sometimes. It's what happens in worker placement. Yeah. But I enjoy Dude Imperium. It's a great game. That's why it's my number three. I like the Dune. Uh, never have played any of the Dune games. But I'm, I've been trying to find folks that have the Dune games to play them. Because I do love the book series. Mm -hmm. Because I've read the book series. I love it. I like the Dune movie that's coming out right now. I've seen the, the last one. The, I saw the last one the Dune movie they put out. And then this one, the sequel, which I haven't seen yet. Yeah, I haven't seen the sequel either. Part one, part two. But I remember the original Dune movie, which I showed my wife uh, first because she wanted to see the new one. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you got to see the first one. Mm -hmm. And she went, you know what? For the time they did this movie, Actually, not bad. I like the storyline. Well, I was a little lost at first, first, but I finally figured it out in the movie. It was a little... But you don't have to watch the movie to enjoy the no, movie. You no, you don't. period. And speaking of uh, single player, this one has a really good AI oh, really? Uh, to play single player. It really mm -hmm. does. I need to check it out then. Uh, we're on number three. Uh, mm -hmm. My number three. Not a big fa I know you're not a big fan of this one. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, it's not... Um, Trains. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not that. I always mentioned that a long time ago. But it is Wingspan. Boo! No, <laughs> so, just kidding. Wingspan. Hey, 2019 game. Shermeyer Games. One to, one to five players. Uh, 26 on BGT. <laughs> I like it. It's a nice game. I like the cards. Is it competitive? It can be. It can be competitive in all aspects, trying to get what you need to buy the cards from this little bird feeder is very hard. It is. I'm, I'm not going to tell false stories here. If you need a, a fish and there are only two fish there and everything else you don't need, that, and you, out of folks going, oh, he needs that fish. They will take the fish. They will take it. It's not, oh, you can have to. No, they will take it. Just to keep you from uh, getting that round's achievement. 
But the cards, the beauty of the cards, this is what does it for me, the beauty of the cards, the pl replayability of it. Because I think now they're up to over a thousand cards. They ain't that many birds. <laughs> well, no. They make up birds? No, the male, female version. Mm, and True. Yeah. Um, and some birds, like an ostrich, it's still a bird, okay? <laughs> but uh, just the playability of the game is is high because there's the chances of you getting the same bird uh, the next game is very low. Uh, the mechanics of it just, for some folks, they just don't like it. Uh, Yomi can take so many uh, food from the bird feeder. Now, there is the uh, wings, uh, the solo mode, which, personally, I don't like it. Hmm. I do not like the solo mode of this because it is in favor of the AI. Because if something happens and uh, a card doesn't uh, come up or the AI does something and he, uh, and I say he, it can be it. It really is a it uh, gets let's say is all uh, birds that are of, of one type. Mm -hmm. It will take all three from the draw area, take the highest one, put it in its count, the point value, and the, then trash the rest. So you, now, if you have a card that you needed there, it's mm -hmm. all gone. It's all gone. Gone. So and then how it stacks up. Cars uh, bo uh, put in underneath the uh, AI, you can do that in the game. They're worth one point for you. The I AI is five points. For every card underneath its main card, it's five points. So you need five points to beat one of its five points. Mm. And the late round, getting eggs, it is just every moment it's going to get an egg. It's, it is stacked against you. I've played it about 12 times. Solo version, have won it once. Once. Now, it is, it is the AI, it is tough. Now, Wings, uh, Wingspan is my number three because of the car's beauty, the gameplay, not so much, but I still would like it because of the cards and how they work great together. But that's my opinion. I know Ooh, your opinion. This is no. <laughs> you know what? I, I think I think I need to give Wingspan another shot. I've, I've only played it maybe once, twice. And like you say, it's one of those things to where, or, or like we always say, it's one of those things where it's who you played it with or how you played it or whatever. And I just, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not a hard game probably to understand, I'd guess. But I guess I need to play it again. The, the artwork is pretty. I'm not going to lie. Stonemeyer did a great job. Yeah, they did. But uh, it's just something that I, I'm not a big, I like birds. I like to watch birds. I see birds in my backyard. I think they're pretty. I think they're cool. You know, I see robins eating worms out of my yard yeah, after I mow. It's, you know, it's nice. I, I don't know. A game about birds, it interests some people, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why they make games with all kinds of um, themes, right? You got games that make beer. You got games that do this, run a bar or a, a distillery. They got games that makes cars, Everything that detective games. So oh yeah, detective. Ev everything, right? So um, I'm gonna have to give it another shot, Lewis, before I bad mouth it so bad. Right? Well, I do say when they induce introduced the Asian version, mm -hmm. they made it a little bit more easier with the nectar, getting it more stuff, mm. and the dice were changed a little bit to give more diversity of getting what you okay. need. So the expansion pack of the Asian version, which there's a two-player version of that now. Okay. And that and there's a board that actually branches off in certain areas that actually automatically give you certain hmm. uh, resources so you can regain 
or well, gain every single round. You don't okay. have to go for the bird, uh, bird feeder. All right. My number two. I have to look at that. My number two is Caverna the Cave Farmer. This was not on my list before. This is a rank 46 on BGG. It's by Lookout Games. It's one to seven players, 30 to 210 minutes to play. Now, this is a little on the longer side yeah. with more people. If you're playing it with two or three, it's not going to take you that long. I like Caverna the Cave Farmer because you're working on your own little, you're raising animals in your field, you're building your cave, you're putting little rooms in your cave, trying to build it up, raise your family. Um, it's just a lot of fun, and you're you're trying to buy things out of the market. You're collecting resources. Um, you can't have more than two. I think it's two animals of the same kind of one spot, and and they have to have a fence around them. And it, it, I just like. I just like the game. It's a lot of fun. Little, little thinky can make some, uh, you know, analysis paralysis for sure. And uh, but the game is fantastic. I like buying the little tiles out from my cave. You know, putting in a mine or putting in a new bedroom for whatever. And what's fun is you can actually put one animal in a room of your house, right? <laughs> so it doesn't have to be a dog or cat. It can be a a pig, it could be a cow, doesn't matter. But I just find it really cool the uh, the whole system of, of Caverna, the the cave farmer. You're trying to get victory points. You're trying to score as much as you can. But the things you get to do are interesting. And I don't think the game plays exactly the same every time. There's always something different that you can do. Different paths you can take to score points. I like that. Caverna, the cave farmer, is a great game. That's why it's my number two. Never heard of that game either. Oh, it's so good. It, it's big and bulky, a lot of stuff in the box. Mm -hmm. It's one of those games that you're like, I hate to drag it up and set it out. But once you do, you enjoy playing it. it it's almost like uh, Feast for Odin. Feast for Odin. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that one. But yeah, Caverna the Cave Farmer. And it's an older game. I mean, it was a 2013 game, so it's 11 years old. Dang. And uh, I got a lot of games I went back to go get because I missed out, you know, coming into board gaming, back into board gaming late, you know, when they started making some good games again. Um, so, you know, there we go. My number two. It's, it's actually a dual board game. It is called Descent. Mm -hmm. And it is Legends of the Dark with Betrayal War. Legends of the Dark 2021. Betrayers of the War 2023. It's Fantasy Flight Games. One to two, one to four players. Legends of the Dark is 459 on the BGG. And Betrayers War 217. Now, this is when they, I say Descent, I have to be specific because there's other Descents out there. there. Is. I have one called Descent Journeys into the Dark. Yes. I don't know where it is, but I have it. Mm, no, I just around, saw it. It's around here oh. somewhere. Um, it is a uh, dungeon draw, uh, crawling ga mm -hmm. uh, uh, game, app driven, completely app driven. It is a very long game. Uh, it says here between 120 to 180 minutes, which is about three hours. No way. That's one session. <laughs> That's one session. And even one session, depending on how everything on falls, could be 240 minutes mm. on this. Uh, uh, the, uh, I play, have been playing with the uh, at Three Sons for now over a year. We're about to hit two years on this game in a few ma uh, months now. But it is a uh, every ever-changing game yeah the pieces on it the uh, figures uh, Christine herself is starting to grow copy she's starting to paint the figures yeah I was there one day when she was painting a couple of them so the figure work is nice the yeah. figures they did a lot of good work on the figures the uh, how the placing all the trees the uh, pieces on the boards how to do different levels 
it is nicely run uh, depending on your skill level there's four skill levels on this game so you can defeat it on the first basic then go back and do another one and it changes mm -hmm. the storyline completely changes I'm doing one myself personally and mine is a set higher than my game group uh, and it is completely different that we just got done to, uh, one act well one quest that my version all the creatures spawned around each of my characters and the version I'm playing with Christine and Dan is another member of my uh, descent group uh, they spawned a couple of times around a character but other times I'll spread it out mm -hmm. which is, makes it a little bit more easier but still difficult and how the app decide uh, when you roll to your abilities your attack and the app does all the calculation on how much mm, hits that's nice yes you don't have to do no calculations other than okay I hit it for seven okay uh, the thing will add how much points is uh, for each one minus the defense for the creature minus its toughness and okay you hit it for this much so um even the little side uh, of feats it also changes depending on how what level you are so the playability of descent it is really high the enjoyment of what level you are is high too the frustration is it's high, high. <laughs> it's high yes it's high too because there's been times we have hit a creature and we come from one point from defeating it and we're out of turns and here comes their turn and they might have a spell one of those creatures have a spell heal and heal and we go and no <laughs> it's horrible I hate that but yes descent is my number two because the playability of it the is that I don't have to calculate the damage yeah it's great uh, that helps the play along on that and how each you might finish it one time but your decisions even on basic you might go back and do different decisions and the game plays completely different right so that's why descent would have been number one but thanks to you another game t tipped it off oh well but descent is my number two don't know what I had to do with it but I probably recommended the game really highly I doubt it but anyway <laughs> oh my uh, wife liked it oh um, there it is alright so my number one I haven't played Descent, but I want to. But my number one is a game that, uh, it's a horror game. I've had quite a few horror oh, yes, games on my, board, on my list. I love this game. It's called Eldritch Horror. Uh, it's ranked, it was ranked number 11 for me a couple years ago on my list. It's ranked 109 on BGG. It's by Fantasy Flight. Um, one to eight players, 120 minutes to 240 minutes. The games that I have usually don't take that long, usually. Um, I can finish them pretty quickly. I've gotten better over the years with the game. Uh, in Elder Tour, you're picking an Elder One to go up against. The Elder One has his own deck of cards, uh, scenario cards, so the theme lines up when you're playing it. Um, this one, you're instead of just working in Arkham Horror, you're working all over the world. You're going to London and other places or not London, but other places in the Arkham universe. Um, it is so good. Um, you get to do these, you can do a town, uh, wherever you're at, you'll do a town one or some other kind of adventure uh, that you'll have to deal with on your turn. Um, you have to get to close gates. There's gates that open that bring out bad guys. You have to control those. You have to control the bad guys. Uh, not to mention you're trying to complete your mission before the Elder God comes out. So it is, it's a great game. My wife was so amazed. We were playing it one day, and she goes, because we played some other games where the theme just doesn't mesh through, right? You may be going up against a character, but the theme doesn't come through the storyline. 
And she goes, wow, all these cards are, are, are for this monster. They're all themed to gas. And Well, yeah, that's how they made the game, right? So, but it, it's just a lot of fun. And it, it's in the same universe as Arkham Horror, the card game, Arkham Horror, the board game. Uh, it's just so good. Eldritch Horror is, I like it better than Arkham Horror because you get to explore out from just Arkham. You're going out to San Francisco and other places, getting clues and, and trying to shut down things. And you have these adventures you can go on to get certain things. I don't know what to say about it, man. It's great. It's why it's my number one is Eldritch Horror. If you, man, if you hadn't played this game, you need to go find it. I recommend it over Arkham Horror greatly. Um, now, I don't know about the revised editions, the third edition. All I know is I played Arkham Horror back in the day. And you had to go to this outer world, and it was really confusing and all this. But you don't do that in Eldritch Horror. You stay where you're at. You do an adventure. You, you go through it. Things, Good things may happen to you. Bad things may happen to you. You have to roll a dice to try to succeed. So if you're not into rolling dice and trying to succeed, don't buy this game. Don't go play it. You won't like it. It is a little luck-based. Mm-hmm. But you still have some mitigation that you can use on those dice. You can use some roll again things and other stuff like that. But Eldritch Horror is my number one. Fantastic game. Love it so much. Uh, you have uh, talked about a lot of that one. And that's another one I want. Um, since I have got into Arkham Horror, it's another one I want to get to. Because I guess started to fall in love in that. Uh, uh, the Cthulhu uh, mythos? Yes. Is fabulous. Yes. My number one. Mm-hmm. Last one. Is a game that you got for uh, for me. Like I said a moment ago, Sunset Over Water. Sunset Over Water. 2018 game, Dr. Uh, Dr. Finn's Games. One, two, four players. 2,288 on BGG. Now, it's, my wife was surprised how low it was ranked. Mm-hmm. I'm going, and I was looking over it, and you have played it already, mm-hmm. but... And what I found out, I've played it with now another group with four players. Personally, I think it's better with only two players on this. Because when you play, it's a game that you are trying to fulfill certain uh, uh, commissions. You have to get these cards that have little symbols on a corner. That either it's a waterfall, a plant, a mountain, um, a few other things. And if you don't have those, it's hard to get the cards that are worth points. Mm-hmm. At the end of each round, there's also, if you were the last one to be in the corner, or the last one to do a vertical or horizontal move, you get a bonus card. But trying to get the commission is hard when you have more than two players. I think, I understand why they did this. If they do four players, and you and I actually talked about this. When somebody takes one of those commission, the rule book should have, and I probably will do an in-house rule of replacing a commission because as soon as it's oh, uh, someone takes that and you have the cards, uh, you're done. You can't pick a commission, and you have to wait until another round to pick uh, for new commissions come out and to uh, pick uh, which one you can get. And depending what uh, what turn you have, and because you pick when you go, you have cards in your hand that have a certain time, and you decide when it's your turn among everybody else. And when you have four folks di- uh, going for one set, it is, and you already use your early cards, mm-hmm. you're gonna be out of luck. Yeah, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. Uh, so, I, uh, you mentioned that that would need to be replaced and I think that's going to be an in-house rule that I'm going to have that if it's more than two players as soon as somebody takes one of those cards we can replace it with a new commission because there's plenty of commission cards in that deck yeah, that yeah. Uh, the only thing that goes down is your time cards mm-hmm. as soon as you get down to the last two again, uh, the last round is made but it's a beautiful game my wife likes to play it over and over again and I really don't know what her plan is because 
it changes every time we play. <laughs> so you can't figure out her strategy. No, I can't. But she loves the game. She does say thank you for the game. Oh. And she, when she saw it was a number one, she went, yay. <laughs> it's a pretty game, I will say. That one flaw for me, especially if you're going last and everybody's picked cards that Yes. That you needed to complete an artist drawing or whatever the artwork you're trying to make. You you just wasted a turn. Yes, you can't do is. anything. And so and then you fall behind on points and it's like you can't catch up. Um, and it's got this grid movement mechanism that I'm not a fan of. They do that in that other one too with the zoo or whatever. Oh, you to, um, with the Jeep. Yes, that's... Uh... <laughs> I can't remember it. It's, yeah, it's but anyway, on my, yeah, one hundred. It's that uh, game where you're moving around with a jeep, trying to go through a grid, and you have mm-hmm. to go a certain direction where your jeep's pointing. You know, just I'd rather draft them. Yes. I'd just rather just draft them, put them out there, and let me draft them. I don't have a problem with that. Going through this grid thing just drives me insane. Um, not a fan of that, but the game is really pretty. And I, and when you said that that was one of the games you were interested in one year, um, I knew I, I got it for you, and I figured your wife was the one saying she liked it the most. That's yeah. why you were interested in it. So I'm glad she liked it, and I'm glad that uh, you enjoy it for sure, guys. That was our top ten. It's our final video in our top 100. Put a note in the comments. What you thought we did, uh, that what you liked, what we thought uh, we ranked too high, maybe. Yep. Uh, what we ranked too low in our list. Uh, just check it out and let us know. So, the winner of the contest. Who was it? Who is it? And where did he come from? What is that from? Who is it? What is he? Uh-huh. Robocop. Rob- Robocop. Yeah, from back in the day. Who is he? What is he? Okay, where did he come day. from? All right. Anyway, our winner of the contest is... Brrr. from all the entries we got it is Mark Patuka Mark Patuka I will be sending you an email to get your address to see where I need to ship this game to congratulations to Mark I hope you enjoy the game and before we go Lewis anything you want to finish up with uh, I don't usually ask Lewis but we will be taking a break Lewis and I will probably be taking a break for a couple of weeks making couple videos weeks, yeah. till we figure out what else we want to do i still be making some videos on my own Putting those out, but uh, Lewis and I will take a break for a couple of weeks, get re energized on what, what we want to do yes. next. And I like having Lewis here filming with me, so I want to keep Lewis involved. Uh, and I hope you guys do too. If you really like seeing Lewis, or you could you want me to dump Lewis, put it in the comments. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a lot of fun having somebody else to bounce stuff off oh, yeah, of and yeah. to talk about. So, um, if you guys have any ideas that you want us to kind of go over, we, we had some to where we were going to talk about maybe bringing... Game uh, mechanics. A game mechanic mm-hmm. to where he brings a game that has a certain game mechanic and I do as well, or a theme. theme and, yes. and we kind of say, this is what I prefer, and he talks about it. And then you guys can vote which one was right. Right. <laughs> How about that? And I don't care. I don't always have to be right. Just because the name says Calvin's Got Game doesn't mean I have to be right. Uh, I'm a wrong. I'm wrong on a lot of things. I promise you, um, but I do know that I enjoy doing these videos. I hope Lewis does. I, of course, I do. And I hope you guys enjoy them enough to start subscribing, guys. I want that 500 before the end of the year. We ain't got long to go. No, get a few more months. like that, man. We got. I think it said we had 20 something, 22 more Fridays before Christmas. Yeah. So if you ain't got your Christmas started, your Christmas shopping started, you better get at it. Um, guys, as I always say, oh, Lewis, did I let you finish saying anything or did I just took right over? <laughs> Go ahead, Lewis. <laughs> no, yes, uh, please subscribe. Calvin has great uh, videos up here. Up here, I've been knowing the man for a while. Um, he has introduced me to uh, th- way different games that I ever never have probably ever thought about uh, trying. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, we come, uh, we're gonna take a couple of weeks' break, but yes, make comments, give us suggestions. What we should touch up on on there, and uh, myself uh, doing these videos actually inspire me to do. If you don't mind, no, go ahead. Uh, to uh, pick up an idea that I had years ago of uh, doing my own video set. Uh, set. Um, but um, and of course, Kevin has been doing this for a while. I'm going. He's going to give me a hand on this. Haven't met. I'm not going to mention what kind of videos I, it is right now. 
because still working on it. But when I'm ready to go, uh, all the things going to be going to Kelvin. You can always gonna, count on me. Lewis. Yeah, he's going to give me a hand on this. But yes, in the near future, you're going to see my own channel coming up there. Good. I can't. I can't wait to see you, Lewis. I can't wait to see what you're going to do, and I can't wait to to get your input or see your input on something that you're passionate about as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, guys, thank you for watching. I can't I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you guys. I know this is a long video. We went almost an hour, hour. and a half. Yes. Uh, but these games were fantastic. We love talking about them. I love talking about games. Uh, and some people say that they that I love to hear myself talk. Not true. I don't like to hear myself talk. See, you ever record yourself on a <laughs> on a cassette and hear it back, you're like, I don't sound like that. But anyway, guys, get a board game to the table. <laughs> Spend time with your friends and your family. And I really thank you for watching Calvin's Guy Game.